In this video, we delve into the baffling disappearances of five Australian hikers who vanished without a trace. These are real stories that defy explanation, leaving behind families, authorities, and communities grasping for answers. From the rugged outback to dense forests, these cases challenge our understanding of wilderness safety and raise haunting questions about what truly happened to these individuals. Join us as we explore the facts and theories surrounding these mysterious vanishings. Warren Meyer, 57 years old, was not your average retiree. His love for nature was palpable, a passion that ran deep within him since his youth. Born and raised in the small town of Narbathong, Victoria, Warren spent his childhood exploring the rugged terrain of the Yarra Ranges, forging a connection with the wilderness that would last a lifetime. After decades of hard work, Warren finally retired, eager to spend his days immersed in the tranquility of nature. He built a modest cabin in Narbathong, where he lived with his devoted wife, Zanette, and their two children, Julianne and Renee. Warren's routine was simple yet fulfilling. Each morning he would wake up to the crisp mountain air, greeting the day with a sense of purpose. He spent his days tending to his garden, hiking through the dense forests, and relishing in the beauty of the Australian bushland. But on March 23, 2008, Warren's routine was shattered by an unexpected turn of events. That morning, Warren announced his plans to go on a solo hike in the nearby Black Spur, a popular destination for outdoor enthusiasts. He kissed his wife goodbye, assuring her that he would return by nightfall. As the hours passed and Warren failed to return, Zanette's worry grew into panic. She called the police, her voice trembling as she reported her husband missing. Soon, a search party was organized, combing through the dense foliage in search of any sign of Warren. Despite their efforts, the search yielded no results. Warren seemed to have vanished without a trace, leaving behind only unanswered questions and a community in turmoil. Adding to the intrigue was the discovery of a marijuana crop hidden deep within the bushland. Could Warren have stumbled upon something he wasn't meant to see? As the days passed, the mystery of Warren's disappearance only deepened. The police launched a full-scale investigation, interviewing witnesses and scouring the surrounding area for any clues. One theory that gained traction was the possibility that Warren had encountered an escaped psychiatric patient known for violent tendencies. Could this individual have been responsible for Warren's disappearance? Despite their best efforts, the police were unable to uncover any concrete evidence. Warren's fate remained a mystery, leaving his family and friends grappling with the uncertainty of his disappearance. Rumors began to swirl in Narbathong, each one more unsettling than the last. Some claim to have heard gunfire echoing through the forest on the day of Warren's disappearance from March 22nd up to March 23rd, which is the day that Warren disappeared. The witnesses who relayed this information to the authorities have said that what they heard were rapid fire and high powered rifle shots, totaling almost 200 rounds in just over two hours, which caused a lot of concern. Warren's disappearance and the time of the shooting coincided with each other. However, the shooters weren't identified which could have helped determine the truth about Warren's disappearance. Meanwhile, others spoke of a mysterious figure lurking somewhere in their area as another theory of his vanishing act. Private investigator Valentine Smith was brought in to assist with the case. His sharp instincts and keen eye for detail proved invaluable in the search for answers. Yet even he was unable to crack the case, leaving Warren's loved ones to wonder if they would ever learn the truth. In the years that followed, Warren's memory lingered in Narbathong. His family held on to hope, clinging to the belief that one day they would find closure. As time passed and the trail grew cold, Warren's disappearance became little more than a footnote in the historical records of Narbathong. His cabin stood empty, home to the man who had vanished without a trace. Conrad Whitlock, a retired Scientologist, was on the edge of uncertainty on the morning of July 28, 2019. At 72, he was a man of routine, his days punctuated by the monotony of suburban life. However, beneath his seemingly normal life lurked a restlessness, a yearning for something more than the tiresome routine that he has been living every single day. His decision to go into the expanse of Mount Buller was covered in mystery, known only to him and the silent peaks that watched over his departure. The events leading up to his disappearance offer scant insight into his motivations, leaving behind a trail of speculation and unanswered questions. 
The night before his vanishing act, Whitlock went to bed early, mentioning his plans for his upcoming tests the next morning. His wife, Mandy, recalled his whispered words. Little did she know those whispered words would be the last she'd hear from him. In the early morning, Whitlock's BMW drove through the dark streets of Sandhurst. Its headlights lit the way as he headed towards the high country. The E-tag on his vehicle activated, recording his trip. By 6 a.m., Whitlock had breached the gates of Mount Buller Resort. His arrival did not go unnoticed. His presence was noted by vigilant motorists as he navigated the winding roads that snaked their way up the mountain. But as the sun climbed higher in the sky, Whitlock's trail grew cold. By 10 a.m., his BMW stood abandoned by the roadside, keys dangling from the ignition. The ensuing days witnessed a frenzied search effort, a desperate attempt to unravel the mystery of Whitlock's disappearance. Police, forestry workers, and search specialists scoured the unforgiving landscape, their efforts hampered by the dense vegetation and treacherous terrain of Buckland Spur Track. Peter Towner, a former detective intimately familiar with such cases, painted a grim picture of Whitlock's fate. He speculated that a head injury sustained in a recent racing mishap, incorporated with the use of unauthorized painkillers, plunged Whitlock into a haze of confusion and disorientation. For Whitlock's wife, Mandy, the passage of time brought little solace. Her husband's abrupt departure defied logic, leaving her grasping for answers amidst a sea of unanswered questions. Did the headaches that plagued him hold the key to his disappearance? Was it a stroke of fate that led him astray? Or something more sinister? As the years stretched on, Whitlock's fate remained a haunting mystery, but Whitlock was not alone in his vanishing act. Four local residents in the foothills of Mount Buller reported sightings of a man fitting his description, adding another layer of intrigue to an already perplexing case. Inspector David Ryan, tasked with unraveling the tangled web of clues surrounding Whitlock's disappearance, expressed cautious optimism amidst the uncertainty. His words, tinged with a sense of urgency, underscored the gravity of the situation as the search entered its third day. Despite the relentless efforts of law enforcement and search teams, Whitlock remained elusive and his whereabouts unknown. Over time, the speculation surrounding his fate only increased, leaving those left behind to deal with the uncertainty of his disappearance. On October 24, 2019, the crisp air of Victoria's Alpine National Park greeted Niels Becker as he set out on what was supposed to be a transformative journey into the heart of the Australian wilderness. At 39 years old, Becker was no stranger to the beauty of the high country. An experienced bushwalker, he had spent years exploring the expanse of Victoria's backcountry, drawn to its silent peaks and deep valleys. For Becker, the decision to go on a solo expedition into the Alpine National Park was more than just a simple adventure. It was a celebration, a tribute to his love for the wilderness and a reflection of the man he had become. In the weeks leading up to his departure, Becker carefully planned every detail of his journey, poring over maps and weather forecasts with the precision of an experienced explorer. Equipped with a sturdy backpack and a heart full of anticipation, Becker bid farewell to civilization and stepped onto the trail, his footsteps echoing through the silent forest as he made his way towards the upper Jameson hut. The air was cool and invigorating, the scent of pine and earth mingling with the faint promise of adventure that hung heavy in the air. As the day wore on, Becker's progress was steady but deliberate. He paused occasionally to take in the breathtaking scenery that surrounded him, marveling at the sheer magnitude of the wilderness that stretched out before him. For Becker, this was more than just a hike. It was a connection with nature, a chance to reconnect with the land and with himself in a way that only the wilderness could provide. By nightfall, Becker had reached the Vallejo Gantner hut, a rustic shelter nestled amidst the towering trees of the Alpine National Park. As he settled in for the evening, he sent a brief message to his family, assuring them of his safety and his intention to continue onward to Mount Sterling in the days to come. But as the days stretched into weeks, Becker's messages grew fewer and farther between, his reassuring updates replaced by a deafening silence that left his loved ones anxious and afraid. Despite their best efforts to reach out to him, Becker remained elusive, his whereabouts unknown, and his fate uncertain. The last time Becker was seen alive was by a fellow bushwalker, who stated that he saw Becker near the crossroads, a spot known to travelers for having good radio reception. It wasn't long before news of Becker's disappearance spread throughout the small town of Mansfield, 
shocking the tight-knit community and sparking a massive search and rescue operation across Alpine National Park. Led by Senior Sergeant Damian Keegan, a seasoned veteran of the Victoria Police Force, the search effort was intensive and thorough, with over 70 individuals, including police officers, volunteers, and search and rescue teams, combing every inch of the wilderness in search of any sign of Becker's whereabouts. But despite their best efforts, Becker's whereabouts were still a mystery, his trail disappearing into the vast expanse of the wilderness like a ghost in the night. With each passing day, the hopes of finding him alive grew dimmer, replaced by the reality of the harsh and unforgiving conditions that awaited those who dared to venture into the wilds of the Australian outback. As the search continued, theories began to emerge about what may have happened to Becker. Some speculated that he had fallen victim to the harsh elements, succumbing to hypothermia or exhaustion as he struggled to navigate the treacherous terrain of the Alpine National Park. Others whispered of foul play, suggesting that Becker may have encountered danger at the hands of another or stumbled upon something sinister in the wild. But amidst the uncertainty and fear that gripped the hearts of those who knew him best, one thing remained clear. Niels Becker's disappearance was more than just a tragedy. It was a lesson about the inherent dangers that were hidden within the beauty of exploring nature. A reminder to us that no matter how much we know of nature, we still have to be cautious. As time passed, Becker's disappearance became more than just a mystery. It evolved into a question without an answer, a story without an ending. It was March 19, 2020, when Russell Hill, an experienced 74-year-old Bushman, went on a camping trip collecting his companion, 73-year-old Carol Clay, from her home in Pakenham. Their destination, the secluded Wanangata Valley in the Victorian Alps, a remote and rugged terrain situated nearly 300 kilometers northeast of Melbourne. Russell, known for his expertise in navigating the wilderness, and Carol, a discreet member of the Country Women's Association, shared a secret love affair hidden from their families and friends. Their trip into Victoria's wilderness was a hidden escape, a chance to be together away from the pressures of their everyday lives. Russell had spent most of his life in the bush, mastering survival skills among the towering trees and winding trails. Born and raised in the countryside of Victoria, he developed a profound connection with the land, finding peace in its beauty. His bushman skills were unmatched, honed through years of experience and a deep understanding of nature's rhythms. Carol, on the other hand, was a devoted member of her community, known for her tireless work with the Country Women's Association. Widowed at a young age, she devoted herself to her children and grandchildren, finding fulfillment in serving others. Behind closed doors, however, she harbored a secret longing for adventure, a desire that led her into the arms of Russell Hill. As they went deeper into the wilderness, away from prying eyes, speculation swirled about the true nature of their relationship. Were they escaping the confines of societal judgment, or were they merely seeking peace by exploring nature by themselves? Days passed without contact. On March 21st, a passerby stumbled upon their campsite, only to find it ravaged by flames. The once tranquil retreat now bore the scars of a sinister event, leaving authorities puzzled and the public in a state of bewilderment. The investigation into their disappearance was a mess of weird clues, each one making the whole thing even more confusing. They found a missing drone, a burnt-out campsite, and inexplicable items scattered amidst the ashes painted a picture of intrigue and suspicion. Speculation ran rampant. Was it a tragic accident, an encounter with foul play, or perhaps a simple romantic trip gone wrong? Former airline pilot Greg Lynn emerged as a central figure in the unfolding drama, charged with the murders of Russell Hill and Carol Clay. The police pieced together a harrowing sequence of events, alleging a confrontation over a drone that turned into a deadly argument. In an alleged report of the incident, Russell and Carol may have been flying a drone within the area of their campsite, and Greg Lynn was annoyed by it, which prompted him to confront the couple, causing him to shoot Carol with his gun and stab Russell to death. However, all of these statements still weren't proven true, since the police couldn't get a firm statement from Greg Lynn, as all alleged details reported were disputed by him. As the case unfolded, the public remained transfixed by the chilling narrative, captivated by the allure of the unknown. Each revelation brought forth more questions than answers. The case of Russell Hill and Carol Clay is not just a story of two individuals who vanished into the wilderness. 
It is a tale of intrigue, betrayal, and the enduring search for truth. On a typical Saturday morning, June 5, 2011, David Prideaux, an experienced outdoorsman and the head of Barwon Prison in Victoria, Australia, went on a hunting trip to the Alpine National Park on Mount Sterling. Departing from Melbourne, David's excitement for the adventure ahead was intense as he left behind the city and its urban bustle. His destination was the breathtaking yet rugged landscape of the Mansfield State Forest, a haven for outdoor enthusiasts seeking solace in nature's embrace. Accompanied by his brother-in-law, Rob Dale, the two men set off into the wilderness, excited for a weekend of hunting and friendship. As they drove through the forest trails in David's Land Cruiser, filled with camping gear and supplies, they joked around and laughed, getting even more excited for their adventure. Their journey led them to Tomahawk Hut, a rustic cabin located deep within the hills, where they settled in for the night, oblivious to the ominous turn their simple trip would soon take. The following morning dawned with the promise of new discoveries as David and Rob set out to scout for hunting spots, their rifles slung over their shoulders and their senses attuned to the surrounding wilderness. However, things didn't go as expected. When the two men came to a junction in the path and separated, David chose the downhill route while Rob headed up the nearby hill. They had no idea that this simple decision would forever alter their lives. Despite David's expertise and knowledge of the area, he mysteriously disappeared without any trace, leaving Rob bewildered and deeply distressed. Rob's account of the events that unfolded paints a picture of baffling mystery and unanswered questions. According to Rob, after they split up, he went to his planned hunting spot and waited to spot any animals to hunt. Hours passed without any sign of David, prompting Rob to grow increasingly concerned. Rob's concern turned to alarm as he realized that David had not returned to the hut as planned. In a desperate bid to locate his missing companion, Rob went on a frantic search of the surrounding area, calling out David's name and looking at every inch of the terrain. Despite his exhaustive efforts, there was no sign of David, no trace of his whereabouts. It was as if he had simply vanished into thin air, leaving behind only a sense of uncertainty. As news of David's disappearance spread, a huge search and rescue effort began, with police, search teams, and local volunteers joining in. Helicopters flew over the dense forest while ground teams carefully checked every part of the rough terrain. Days, weeks, and even months went by, but David was still missing, and no one knew what happened to him. Despite the relentless efforts of search teams and the determination of his family and friends, there was no trace of David, nor any clue about what might have happened to him that day in the wilderness. In the years that followed, many theories and guesses came up, each more intriguing than the last. Some thought David might have been harmed by someone, while others believed he might have had an accident or gotten lost in the harsh wilderness. However, despite all the rumors and guesses, one thing was clear. The true story of what happened to David Prideaux stayed unsolved, a complex mystery without a clear answer. David Prideaux was more than just a name on a missing persons report. He was a beloved husband, a devoted father, and a respected member of his community. His disappearance left a void in the lives of those who knew him, a lingering sense of loss and unanswered questions that refused to fade with time. For Rob Dale, David's disappearance was a harrowing ordeal that would haunt him for the rest of his days. The guilt and anguish he felt at being unable to prevent his companion's disappearance weighed heavily on his conscience. Despite his repeated assertions of innocence, Rob could not shake the feeling that somehow he was to blame for David's fate. As for David's family and loved ones, the pain of his absence is a wound that refuses to heal. Each passing day brings fresh reminders of the void left by his disappearance, a constant reminder of the uncertainty that surrounds his fate. Despite their best efforts to move forward, David's disappearance still haunts them, casting a shadow over their lives and leaving them to wonder. What if David had never gone into the wilderness that day? What if he had stayed home with his wife and children safe and sound?